everybody, it's Brock, and we got a brand new episode of All About. Today we got a coral, and a coral that is great for beginners or even experts that are looking to add some new color to the reef. Today we're going to be talking all about the Kenya tree coral, also called the cauliflower coral. Kenya trees are such a good beginner coral because they are very hardy to all tank conditions. So if you're starting out and you run into a spike with your levels or you make a mistake messing with your tank, there's a good chance that the Kenya trees will do just fine through it as you get your levels back under control. It's a soft coral or a leather that like people like to call them. So they reproduce quickly, they grow big, and most of the time they are very hardy. Kenya trees will typically cost you about $30 to $50 for a nice frag. Surprisingly enough, found this one in the video at Petco of all places, and it was only $20 for such a nice looking soft coral. Just had great colors on it, and I really liked it. Had to add it. Obviously, getting a larger size tree or rock with multiple on it will cost you a bit more, depending on how many you want. But these soft corals grow relatively fast, which can be also good for beginners who like to know they're doing a good job or someone who is trying to fill in some gaps around the reef. Maybe you have a spot where it's been just an empty cave or an open spot where nothing's ever grown. It's a good one to plug in right there. Tank size really doesn't matter. Just make sure it has plenty of room to grow and enough lighting and nutrition to thrive. Care level again, a solid and maybe one of the best beginner corals to try out. So super easy on care level. Temperament, I would say semi-aggressive. You want to give the Kenya trees plenty of room to stretch out their branches and room to grow over time. Like other soft corals, including ones like toadstools and cabbages, they can release toxic chemicals from their skin that can harm the surrounding corals, especially hard and soft corals. Now, in my experience with the Kenya trees, it doesn't seem like they release it as bad as some of those toadstools and cabbages. We used to have these big nephthia trees in a reef. And it was like they released that stuff all around the tank. It was terrible. You could see all the corals would suck up whenever they would release that mess. Just keep in mind that other corals can also sting Kenyas right back. And if it's bad enough, it could cause them to perish. So put them in a good spot where they're not going to be hit by sweeper tentacles or things that are going to be bothering them. The reason I give them semi-aggressive rating is really their ability to grow so fast and can cause shadows or even be bothersome to surrounding corals, causing them to stay closed up because of how big they can get, how much they can stretch out. So make sure where you put them, just make sure you're looking all around the tank. Okay, the light's hitting them like this. Down below, I have a colony of zoas. I probably shouldn't put them here because he's going to eventually cover them up. So just to be thinking about those things as you're putting them in the tank, even if he is just a frag. Temperature, I usually recommend 72 to 78, DKH 8 to 12, pH 8.1 to 8.4, and your salinity 1.020 to 1.025. With a beginner coral like this, it isn't as needed for you to dose chemicals and keep track of them as it would be for an LPS and an SPS coral, but this is such a great time to start practicing testing your levels and dosing them to get them to the right level. This way, when you do start getting more challenging corals or ones that need more attention, you've set yourself up for success. Calcium and magnesium levels are really important for a coral like this. For calcium, I usually try to hit 400, but a good range is 380 to 450. And then for magnesium, I try to hit around 1200 to 1400 parts per million. And these two chemicals work in a seesaw pattern. So if you notice, you cannot get your magnesium higher, probably because your calcium levels are too high. As one comes up, the other goes down. So you have to find that happy medium. One level that can be harmful to corals if it gets too high is phosphates. Make sure to keep those low as possible. Spiking phosphates can ruin a reef. So this is another one you can test out throughout the life of the Kenya tree. And it also will help you for future corals you take care of. The size of a Kenya tree can get fairly large. Like other soft corals, they seem to have a never-ending size. They can take over tanks. Like toadstools, they get massive at times in the right conditions. Even cabbage coral can take over a tank. So like Kenyas, they'll do the same thing. Most times I see Kenya trees, one single one, get about eight inches before slowing down, but that's not going to stop them from splitting off and releasing branches around the tank to grow more. We're going to see how big this one in my display tank gets. He already is a good size and he's been growing quick. 
For current in my tank hitting the Kenya tree, I like to recommend a moderate flow. Too much is going to cause the Kenya tree to shrivel up, and too low of a current can be bad because you'll allow algaes to grow on them, or even worse, cyano can grow on its skin, which will really stress the coral out, keeps it shrunk up. You definitely don't want that. You can see the one in my tank has a real nice flow, allows those branches to sway around and filter feed throughout the day, so try to hit on that. For placement, I've really had good luck with these corals all around the tank. I've had some at the very top of a reef that ran on T5 bulbs. Currently have this one in the sand bed under Hydra 26s. So really just find that moderate flow that there's enough room for them to spread out in your tank, and that'll be the perfect spot. For lighting, another great thing about beginner corals is the fact that you do not have to have a really expensive light on your tank. Just find one with some good colors and hits the par levels that they need. For Kenya trees, 50 to 150 par will be plenty for them. T5s are great. High output LEDs like my Hydra 26s or AI Primes are some of my favorites. Metal halides are good ones too. Don't see those as often now in the hobby though. Just study the coral as it's in your tank. If you notice it start to shrivel up or turn white, you might be running your lights too long or one of the levels on the lights, maybe your whites are too high. So play with it, fine tune it, find what they like. Colorations on Kenya corals can vary from tans, browns, and pinks. The whole reason I got this one is because it had such a good pink coloration to it. I thought it looked great against that black sand bed. For the diet, so the Kenya trees are photosynthetic. They're going to be feeding off the lights throughout the day, but it's also good to spot feed them too. I love dosing liquid foods like oyster feast, phyto, fuel, even reefroids is a good one in the power heads, and you'll notice those hands at the end of the branches will start going to work catching that stuff. This also just helps the overall health of the coral stay up and helps them grow faster. Kenya trees are found all over, usually residing in the Philippines, Sri Lanka, and Australia. Nowadays, you're probably getting aquacultured frags of the coral because they have become just so easy to reproduce in the tank setting. Now, what about fragging the Kenya tree? This is an amazing coral for beginners to start practicing fragging. The skin is easy to cut, and it also does really well in the healing process after being fragged. So the Kenya tree will typically shed a branch that will hopefully attach to another rock and continue to grow, and this process will just keep repeating itself. When fragging, I usually like to choose a larger branch of the Kenya tree that has a lot of little branches on it. That way it has a good chance of surviving, still has a lot of little polyps on it to filter feed, and it should be able to heal up where you cut. When I show people fragging, I always try to get them to frag a larger piece rather than a smaller one because one will have a harder time surviving. If you go in there and frag, you know, little tiny single branches of a Kenya tree, I can promise you there will be a good number of them perishing or just take forever to get large enough. Since this is a leather, they will also go through a shedding process about every month to three months. When they do this, they will shrivel up really small, might even change colors, and sometimes they'll produce this waxy substance along their skin. This is all completely normal, one of their growing processes, and also how they clean their skin. So after five to seven days, it should come back out like normal, sometimes bigger than its previous size before shedding. So if you notice it staying shriveled up for longer than that, I definitely look into testing your water, check out your lights, but after seven days, if he comes back and is normal, don't worry about it. They're just doing their normal thing. All right, let's wrap it up. Remember, one, give them plenty of room to grow. You don't want them casting shadows or bothering your surrounding corals. Two, start practicing dosing and testing those chemicals in your reef. And three, spot feed them. They'll love it. Helps you practice on that too. It also just helps them stay really healthy. Hope this gave everyone a good overview of what it takes to take care of a Kenya tree and also if it's right for your tank. If you have any experience with these corals or any questions you'd like to ask, please leave it down below in the comments for future viewers to see. The more we learn from each other, the better off we're going to be in this hobby. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're going through all this ice and snowstorms like we are, be careful. And always be safe, stay kind, and I'll see y'all later.